This week was very exciting for Mac users because we got three separate announcements on three different days. Monday, we got a brand new iMac with M4. Tuesday, we got new Mac minis with M4. And then on Wednesday, MacBook Pro 14 and 16 with M4 Pro and M4 Max. Now I got to go hands-on with all of these devices and right out of the box, the Mac mini is hands down the most exciting announcement out of all of these. This thing looks incredible. Like picture a mini Mac Studio. In fact, I got to see it beside the previous Mac Mini and it's just significantly smaller. Now it is taller at two inches, but the overall footprint is smaller. Like the depth and the width is only five by five. I know there's a lot of contention right now on Twitter about the placement of the power button being underneath. I think this is the most ridiculous thing I've heard in a very long time because I have a Mac Studio. I turn it off or reset it maybe once every year. And that's usually because it's an update or maybe something crashed. But for the most part, placing your hand underneath it to turn the power button on or off is so easy. Like it just doesn't make sense. Most people who have Mac Studios and Mac Minis don't turn off their computer every single night. It, there's no need to. These things are so efficient that it just doesn't make sense. And there's even arguments to be made that you should always leave your desktop computers on. Now, the good news is this new Mac mini still starts at $599. You can still connect up to three different displays with 6K resolution. It comes with a 10 core CPU up to a 14 core GPU for the M4 Pro model. And you can really spec this thing up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. What really surprised me was that the specs are so good that I feel like a lot of people are gonna be looking at the Mac mini and considering this over the Mac Studio. So on the lower end of the Mac Studio, you might see some sales that get cannibalized. But I think for a lot of people, they are mostly excited about having two USB Type-C ports on the front. This just makes connecting simple devices a lot easier. You don't have to reach around to the back. Uh, three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back. The two front ports, regardless of whether you get M4 or M4 Pro, are just regular USB Type-C, 10 gigabits per second. So if you're connecting very fast storage drives, I'd place them on the back. If you're connecting a mouse or just a simple peripheral, I would do it on the front. You can spec these devices with 10 gigabit ethernet. But what really shocked me was the weight, 1.5 pounds. Like I was literally palming this thing in my hand. And I feel like someone out there is gonna be using this on the go. They're gonna connect some sort of power bank, maybe some display glasses and have one of the most powerful computers in your backpack. Now the MacBook Pro 16 and MacBook Pro 14 are basically getting internal updates. The overall design and even the weight are pretty much identical to the previous version. In fact, the only difference in terms of weight is the MacBook Pro 16. If you buy the M4 Max version, it is 4.7 pounds, whereas the previous M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 was 4.8 pounds. You're not gonna feel it, but there is a difference. Uh, price points are pretty much identical to the previous version. If you're buying the M4 version of the MacBook Pro 14, you're starting at $15.99, then it goes up to $19.99 if you spec it with an M4 Pro. The MacBook Pro 16 starts at $25.99, but there is a difference in base RAM. Like every device coming out from Apple right now is getting a base memory of 16 gigabytes, but the MacBook Pro 16 is actually starting at 24 gigabytes. Now this will save some people a little bit of money when they're specking it with extra memory because the base starts a little bit higher. Now, design-wise, they're identical. The big changes come down to the webcam. You now get a 12 megapixel center stage webcam. We've seen this before on other devices. They're bringing it to the MacBook Pros. Also, the right port on the MacBook Pro 16 and MacBook Pro 14 is now Thunderbolt 5. In fact, all the ports are Thunderbolt 5. And this is great, right? Thunderbolt 5 provides a lot more bandwidth. If you're connecting very high speed devices up to 120 gig gigabytes a second, you're going to have a lot more bandwidth to play with. It's unfortunate though, that there's still no external GPU we can connect to this because having all that bandwidth really opens up the possibility of having an external GPU, but it's something we're just not going to see. Look, you can spec these things all the way up to 16 core CPU with a 40 core GPU, which is identical to the previous MacBook Pros from last year. Most of the performance uplift will just be on efficiency alone and just having faster overall frequencies. But I really think for a lot of people this year, the M4 Pro is gonna be the one to get because they bumped it up from 12 cores to 14 cores and from 18 core GPU to 20 core GPU. So I feel like that's gonna be the sweet spot for most people. More excitingly is the unified memory is faster, anywhere from 100 and 150 gigabytes a second, depending on the spec you go for. This is just gonna make things a lot more fluid, especially if you're using applications that eat a lot of memory, having that higher speed will make a difference. Now they did introduce the nano texture display version of the MacBook Pros. And look, it really depends on what you want. Personally, 
I still like having no nano texture just because the screen looks a lot more vibrant and contrasty. When you have that layer over, yes, you're like completely reducing the reflection on the screen, but you are taking a hit in terms of vibrancy. So keep that in mind. Now, because these M4 chips are so efficient, battery life apparently has been improved. We're going from 22 hours to 24 hours on the MacBook Pro, an extra two hours on the MacBook Pro 14. The battery sizes are still the same. It's the max limit at 100 watt hours, at least for getting on a plane. But look, I've never used a laptop where a battery has lasted 24 hours. The most I'll get is an entire day. Like I can use my MacBook Pro 16 on a seven hour flight, edit video and still have battery life left. Like this will probably translate maybe into 30 or 45 minutes more of battery life. Plus, if you buy these new MacBook Pros, SDR brightness gets bumped up from 600 to 1000 nits. HDR and peak brightness is still the same across the board. Finally, we have the iMac. This to me was probably the least exciting announcement just because not a lot has changed. It's still the same design. It's still 24 inches. It's still the same resolution in the display. What has changed though is the color options. They're a little bit more vibrant. I think they introduced a new vibrant pink color, but most importantly, they replace the accessories with USB type C ones. Unfortunately, the magic mouse still has to be flipped over in order to charge it. It's kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. Also, if you want the M4, it's now available on all of these iMacs. And just like all the other devices I talked about, the base RAM is being bumped up to 16 gigabytes. Okay, so that wraps up my hands-on and first impressions of these new devices. Let me know what you guys are excited about the most. Also, if you have any questions for my full review, because I will be reviewing these things, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. Make sure you like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.